After Israel launched its assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in the Iranian capital Tehran, only hours after committing a civilian massacre in order to assassinate Hezbollah official Fawad Shukr in the Lebanese capital of Beirut, the U.S. is telling the world that it will help Israel in implementing its right of self-defense. Despite the fact that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivered his warmongering speech to Congress last month and received a record number of rounds of applause in doing so before traveling back to the Middle East and carrying out the aggression he had just spent his US trip advocating for, somehow the US media and policymakers in Washington are still claiming that Israel is the victim. Iran immediately informed the United Nations of its intentions to retaliate under Article 51 of the UN Charter, and it was clear that this was a blatant act of war by Israel. However, the US Biden administration couldn't even bring itself to acknowledge that Iran had any right of self-defense at all. In principle, as a sovereign nation, does Iran have the right to defend itself? Said, uh... It's a simple question. Does Iran, as a sovereign nation, as any other nation, does it have the right to defend itself? Iran is a regime that uh, time and time again, uh, since 1979, has mm -hmm. one been the largest and greatest exporter of terrorism. So you're saying that the nature of the Iranian regime strips it of the right to defend itself and to defend Said, its sovereignty. I just don't have any okay. assessment to offer on this. Okay. Instead, the U.S. began to beef up its military presence in the Mediterranean and Persian Gulf, readying itself to follow Israel into a regional conflagration involving Yemen's Ansar Allah, Lebanese Hezbollah, Iraq's PMU, and, of course, Iran. The U.S. has spent billions in taxpayer dollars on its failed Operation Prosperity Guardian in the Red Sea, all to try and allow ships to pass Yemen's blockade on ships heading to the Israeli-controlled port of Ilat. Even in April, when Iran launched a missile and drone attack against Israel in retaliation for Israel's strike on the consular segment of Tehran's embassy in Syria, the U.S. was there by Israel's side to spend billions in combating the attack without consulting the U.S. people, of course. The Israelis currently stand plausibly accused of committing genocide at the World Court. The International Criminal Court's chief prosecutor has called for arrest warrants to be issued against Benjamin Netanyahu himself and his defense minister, Yoav Gallant, while the UN and human rights reports pour in about Israel's manufacturing of a famine in Gaza and committing mass torture, including mass rapes, against Palestinian prisoners who are held without charges by the Israelis in detention centers and prisons. At every turn, the Israeli military is committing unimaginable aggression across the region and decided to commit assassinations that violated the sovereignty of two nations. However, we are still being told that the US should defend Israel. But the problem with this is that the American people were never given a vote on whether they should follow the Israelis into another war 